This presentation will give an introduction to the life and legacy of Ernst E. Busch. Known best for his work as a pioneer in the field of cultural psychology, Bosch was born on December 26, 1916, in St. Gallen, Switzerland, and had a long career in the field of psychology before passing away on July 12, 2014, at the age of 97 years old. His early life was spent in St. Gallen, Switzerland. The economic breakdown of Switzerland and its neighboring countries in the 1920s and 1930s left Bosch's family poor and often hungry. Poverty and his parents' divorce led Bosch to act out as a teenager, and in fact, he was almost expelled from high school, which would have ended his illustrious career before it had begun. Bosch eventually straightened out and sought an escape from his difficult circumstances through an intense interest in music and poetry. Given his interest in poetry, young Bosch sought to enter the literary world after high school. However, the rise of Nazism, which infected even his most beloved writers, caused him to begin his undergraduate studies with the intention of entering medical school. Thus, he entered the University of Geneva in 1939. In autobiographical reflections, Bosch describes his time at the University of Geneva as a second birth. After realizing how complicated and expensive medical school was, he impulsively enrolled in the Jean-Jacques Rousseau Institute under the direction of Édouard Claparède, a psychologist, and Pierre Beauvais. He began his studies just after the outbreak of World War II, but Swiss students were released from service and the war largely left his studies unaffected. At the Rousseau Institute, Bosch was blessed to study under four impressive mentors. Édouard Claparède was a Swiss neurologist, a child psychologist, and educator, in charge at the department at the time that Bosch enrolled. Bosch experienced his, as he called it, humane and wise teaching for just one year before Claparad passed away. The now famous developmental psychologist Jean, Pi Jean Piaget took Claparad's place and Bosch was quite taken with his teaching style. In particular, he was impressed by Piaget's skill in interviewing children in front of the class. In some autobiographical musings, Bosch writes of Piaget, he had an overwhelming intellectual presence. His lectures opened to me a way of thinking which marked me for life. I remember saying that I felt him to be like a giant mountain one cannot hope to climb. Near the end of Bosch's studies, Piaget offered him a research assistant position in his lab, working on his soon to be famous studies of visual illusions. However, Bosch found the work tedious and frustrating and he did not understand the purpose and importance of these studies. In fact, Piaget never explained it to him, so he declined the position. Bush identified more closely his primary faculty advisor, André Ray, and noted that the clinical psychologist somehow induced identification tendencies. We imitated his voice and gestures almost like signs of tribal belonging. Ray taught Bush the basics of test practice, test construction, diagnostic reasoning, and importantly, how to interact with children. Because of these strong influences from Piaget and Ray, Bosch took a job as a school psychologist back in his hometown in St. Galen. In reflecting on his time as a school psychologist, Bosch said, as a new school psychologist, I had no other experience of schools than what I remembered of my own school days. My only knowledge of child behavior disturbances was gained in the casework with Andre Ray. I had no experience in remedial teaching, therapy, or counseling parents, and having grown up in town, I was in no way familiar with rural life in our canton. Thus, I was hard pressed just to learn the elements of my job. While a difficult transition, this was his first encounter with the idea of cultural translation. He had been trained in many diagnostic tests by his advisor, Andre Ray, However, those tests had been standardized in French for children living in towns. In St. Galen, Bosch identified the need to readapt the diagnostic techniques for Swiss country children. Bosch was quite active during this time. He also defended his dissertation in 1943 on the challenges of school psychology, founded a regional society for mental hygiene, and managed to influence Piaget to study development into adolescence. 
Bush's final doctoral thesis in 1946 garnered some attention, and in 1951, Professor Maurice de Bass from Sorbonne University in Paris invited him to write a book on the psychological study of children. This book was eventually published in 1952. De Bess's influence in addition to Piaget's resulted in Bush's invitation to be the chair of psychology at the new University of Saarland in 1951, just a three-year-old institution. He was to have a long and industrious career here and held this position at the University of Saarland until his retirement in 1986. We will now move to an overview of Bosch's development as a cultural psychologist. As mentioned earlier, his undergraduate experience in Geneva was like a new awakening. While he did not study culture explicitly during this time, it was his first experience being immersed in a new and exciting way of life, much different from his upbringing. Here and in his work as a school psychologist in St. Galen, he began his important relationship with psychological testing and the need for culturally relevant measures. His second major move towards becoming a cultural psychologist was the beginning of his position at the University of Saarland in Saarbrücken, Germany. He described the change as such. Thus, I changed culture again, but not towards sunnier sores like in Geneva, but towards a blackened town with bombed buildings still only partially and provisionally restored and to a university housed not in old palaces, but in deserted army barracks with bullet holes in the walls. Here, he was thrown not only into a mix of European cultures, but also into a professorship in which he was ill-prepared. He noted in his autobiography that he spent the first four years scrambling to develop his course material. Thus, he was still unaware of his interest in culture at this time. His position at the University of Saarland, however, was an important stepping stone in his journey towards cultural psychology and the study of this. In 1955, Bush was given the opportunity to direct the new International Institute for Child Study in Bangkok, Thailand by UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. Bush marks this offer as one of the many coincidences which governed his life and as a major turning point in his life and career. His assignment in Bangkok was to study the impact of culture on the development of children, with which he became enthralled. Part of the enjoyment of this assignment was that it offered an escape from post-war Europe, the competitive stress of university life, and from a dysphoric marriage. Motivated by a wish to participate, belong, and identify with the culture he was immersed in, he learned the Thai language and became proficient enough to teach in it. His time in Bangkok thus was spent training Thai research staff, adapting testing procedures to the Thai culture, conducting research experiments for UNESCO, and organizing the first UNESCO expert meeting on cross-cultural research in child psychology. His time in Thailand from 1955 to 1958 also greatly influenced the way that he thought about the world. He wrote, the cultural conditions I experienced in Thailand made me attentive to the relevance of space, time, and social relations. Action determined cognition, cognition determined action, and action theory thus became ecological. By the time Bush moved back to the University of Saarland in 1958, he had finally distinguished himself as a cultural psychologist. He established and became the director of the Research Center for Educational Assistance, thus allowing the opportunity for him to conduct culturally relevant research that could be applied to the education of children. The research performed at the center was an important addition to his teaching in social, cultural, and child psychology, and he noted in his autobiography that, this suited my inclinations. Psychology, I felt, should be useful to the world in which we live, but in a theoretically consistent way. 1959 and 1960 also marked important shifts in Bush's personal life. He and his wife Claire divorced, and in 1960 he went back to Thailand to marry his Thai language instructor, Supani, to whom he was happily married for the rest of his life. In regards to Bush's academic pursuits, unfortunately, the students and staff at the University of Saarland were less enthralled with his new theories and approach to psychology. In the 1960s and 70s, behaviorism, a movement led by B.F. Skinner, picture here, 
took over as the main theoretical orientation of psychology. Students and professors feared that he was out of step with the times and labeled him a neo-colonist for his interest in Thailand and other third world countries. Ironically, they were simply fighting for his compliance to mainstream psychological thought. Instead of focusing on behaviorism, Bosch focused his work on linking action theory to cultural psychology. Action theory was used as a framework for understanding the human experience in terms of daily, goal-directed behavior. Bosch expanded on this by systematically asking the question, what kind of action is this? To rituals, music, art, and other expressions of culture. Eventually, this questioning led to a new framework of thought and one of Bosch's best-known contributions to the field, symbolic action theory. This new way of thinking was heavily influenced by the specific contextual factors of the human action in question and has become an important tool for studying cultural psychology. Bush continued his work into his 90s and his writings continue to influence psychologists today.